Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission, here to help you and myself also in the process achieve both looking and feeling our best. Now to look our best, we really actually do need to have our lives in order. And there are some ways to kind of go through life that will actually lend to being more beautiful and not being in this overly stressed out state. So this, this show is actually going to be really insightful for those of you who are mothers, who have a job, who are entrepreneurs, but also for the guys too, to even get a perspective on really what it's like being a woman and, you know, working and then being at that that different time when we're not working and then it's enjoying life and kind of how to navigate and support ourselves and others during that process to really enjoy life. I just did a a follow-up call with one of my clients yesterday and, you know, she's very successful. She has two boys, a boat, husband, but when she's doing those things, she's really not enjoying her time with her family because she's thinking about all the other things that have to get done in the business. And that's just not how we want to cruise through life. We want to really be enjoying the life that we have worked so hard to create and are, are in and experiencing and being in that present moment. This is going to be a really fun episode. We have joining us here today, Amira Alvarez. She's a UC Berkeley graduate and is the founder and CEO of The Unstoppable Woman and a host of the top 2% podcast worldwide, The Unstoppable Woman podcast. She's an entrepreneur, private mentor, and trusted advisor for the ambitious women. Amira inspires already accomplished women to achieve further financial wealth and success while leading fulfilling lives. After achieving a remarkable five-fold income increase in one year, including a multi-million dollar company, she found a way to create harmony between ambition, spaciousness, and contentment. Unwilling to compromise her drive for success, she crafted a methodology for an exquisite life, allowing individuals to embrace their inner drive while finding deep fulfillment. Her path guides high-achieving women towards a life rich inside and out where they realize their dreams without diminishing their hard-earned successes. Amir challenges the notion that we can't have it all, redefining what's possible for ambitious women. So what's next after success and fulfillment and growth? We're going to be talking all about that, and we're going to be going pretty deep here. And this is just going to inspire you to go through life, you know, feeling like you have more enjoyment in what you're working hard to create with your life, with your family, with your partners and all of that. So I warmly welcome you, Amira, onto the School of Radiance podcast. It's a pleasure having you here. How are you today? And of course, what is Radiance to you? Mm, Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited for our conversation and, and all that it's going to bring to the audience. So in terms of radiance, I was thinking about that. And for me, it's a deep connection to a spiritual, my spiritual self, my, my um, true nature, my greater self, whatever you want to call that. There is a flow of life of source that runs through us. And when I am connected to that, I am radiant, right? When I am, when I am in touch with that wholeness, that, that exquisite power, that exquisite, um, life force, it comes out in, in my eyes, in my skin, in my hair, in my smile, in my energy. And in how I am experiencing life, the the pleasure and joy that I'm feeling, and so I think that radiance to me—I mean, there's an outer version of radiance, right? How we look on the outside, which uh, is important to me. But what feeds that? I can do as much as I, you know, spend tons of money, do do all the physical things to 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 
make my skin glow, if you will, because because that's important to me. And I trust me, I do those things, right? If I'm not feeding my insides with a, a deep connection to my spiritual source, none of that matters. I I I, I look at myself and I feel there's a there's a deadening of of it because energy is just so important to to radiance in my in my mind oh what a beautiful answer i'm always so curious how others perceive this word radiance which at the end of the day i really feel like is my calling to kind of unpack because i there's so many different qualities that radiance impacts in our lives and when you're talking about you know, your process and the way that you look and how high of a value that is. Actually, right before getting ready here, I was looking at myself in the mirror. I've been doing the carnivore diet for about nine months, like 90% of the time. I'm back at the gym for the last week, like almost every day. And my body has completely transformed from even just a few months ago. And I was in renovation, so I didn't really have a lot of mirrors around. And then I look at myself like, what happened? Right? And we're going to talk about, you know, different things that we go through. And resilience is such a key component of radiance. I'm sure you've experienced that in your life as well. But there's the shift that, you know, I've experienced a few times now where I've done certain things and then I look better with actually, I feel like less effort and just things in my life are better and, you know, less stress and more in that feminine energy, which we are going to talk about because it is super important, especially for you, Amira, really coaching and working with very successful, especially entrepreneurial women. I'd love for you to get into, and also, you know, the spiritual component I actually have what's funny in high school. My teachers gave me the spiritual leadership award when I graduated. I don't think I've actually ever said that on the show. And that's a very feminine quality to be in tune. And then it's like that space between is actually the ether, the fifth element, the quintessence that actually makes up about 80% of our universe. So I believe that it's making that's that component of us on point, which I would say definitely um, connection to source, spirituality, life force. Those are all part of it, our frequency and our unique signature. It's not just our name, but it's our DNA and it's, it's our unique frequency which can be a gift uh, to others and also to ourselves when we, when we kind of hone in a little bit. I'd love for you to get into some of the things that I know that you teach and like your real house. And I'd love for you to explain something. The four out of the five problems that uh, oftentimes we can experience. Yeah. So I work with really high achieving women, the, the ambitious driven people. And I think that they, they're in different places in their life, but oftentimes they, the, the commonality is that, that they are setting their goals and they know how to achieve them. They really do. They're very good at it. And I know I, I was, I would set, set a goal and I would figure out how to achieve it. And I, I would go for it and I would, you know, check, got that down. And so what ends up happening is, is you have many things in your life that are actually great. They're actually, you've achieved them. You feel satisfied. Look, I got that taken care of. I got that taken care of. I got that taken care of. So four out of five things are absolutely stunning and amazing in your life. Maybe your relationship's great. Maybe your business is great. Maybe your leadership and your team and your, your impact's great, but you're completely stressed out doing all of that. So your weight is, you know, 20, 30 pounds over, right? That's the fifth thing, right? And you're like, wait, everything's going great, but this, or maybe it's your health is great. Your business is great, but your relationship is not so good. You haven't had sex in the last year, something like that, right? I know for me, you know, in past relationships, you know, I, I wasn't orgasming. I thought something was wrong with me. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm broken. That's not for me. That That's not in my, my, uh, in the cards for me. And, and in fact, it was that I was limiting myself in what I 
thought I could receive. And the, the fifth thing is usually my experience when I've, you know, through many, many, many times coaching very, very talented, very successful women is the thing that is their core wound. It's in the, the, the area that is the, the, the deeply challenged place for them. And it's the thing that keeps coming up again and again and again. So if I just use myself with transparency as an example, for me, my, my core wound was all around feeling lovable, feeling seen and, and presenced by, um, you know, my father, when I was growing up, great person, great father. I did not feel fully seen, fully important. And so I, I grew up with this core wound that made me feel like I wasn't lovable. So I poured everything into the places where I felt competent, trying to fill that wound, avoid looking at it, deal with it in any way I could. So I was successful in these four out of five places. But the fifth place was the place that I really, really wanted to, to feel successful in. And so the four out of five problem in summary is, is that you've got most of the things in your life really dialed in, but there's this fifth area that is usually um, something that has been a pattern for you. It repeats again and again and again. You're never able to really solve that or feel satisfied there or feel like you have competence in that area and achieve it. And, and what I have found is that when we work and do the work on, on identifying the core wound and, and it's flip the core desire, we're able to then satisfy that fifth area so that you have that in, in your life. That is so beautiful and quite eloquently stated, I must say, Amira, well done. One of the things that came up when I was listening was softening that area. Mm-hmm. And it's not about putting your head in the sand and turning a blind eye to things that are real problems in our lives, because that's going to end up playing out in the subconscious and unconsciously in your life. And I know on your website, you use the word shadow. And shadow work is uh, kind of coined by Carl Jung. And the feeling of feeling unlovable, so many women grapple with that. And then they get into rejuvenation. They go through perimenopause, menopause, uh, breakup, death of a loved one, things going on with the kids. Again, those, those five areas that you mentioned, there's just something a little bit off. And they think that oh, if I, you know, do my rejuvenation, I'm going to look better. So I'll feel better. But actually when you feel better and you fix your life, I'm here to tell you after having performed 20,000 rejuvenation procedures since 2011 and teaching other doctors and nurses internationally for some of the biggest manufacturers of aesthetics products in the world, you cannot rejuvenate those qualities. And some of the things that we're going to talk about it's the it's really the personal development side of things and just the balancing which you were alluding to which we're going to get into i'd love to get into this concept of the superwoman status and thank you for being vulnerable in your experience as well and you know i think that women are going to be more likely to orgasm when they're with a beautiful masculine man and they feel protected and provided for and you know things start off slow and kind of just wake the body up a little bit and get out of the head and actually be in our body, but also be, you know, comfortable in our body with our body composition and all of that. Of course, we'll feel more confident and maybe more lovable, but first we have to really love ourselves. And I think that when we do truly love ourselves, we are going to eat better. We're going to have better thoughts. We're going to exercise more because we know that we need to get our muscle up and be strong and not be, you know, waifs or overweight and carry extra toxins. And really it's, it's loving ourselves first so that we then can be lovable is, is a, an approach that I've personally, personally gone through in my journey too. 
So let's talk about the superwoman status. And here's where I'll be a little bit uh, transparent. Um, growing up in North America, you know, go to university, get the job, um, be a rock star at the job, start to teach, show up on stages, fly here, there, everywhere. Really like that that high achieving jet set lifestyle. That's really what I was doing a number of years ago. Still am kind of now, but in a slower capacity. And then I was in two car crashes. Mm. And it forced me to slow down because I literally couldn't work to the same capacity I was. So I had this huge shift in being on this, you know, superwoman trajectory to then having to slow down. So I'd love for you to talk about the shadow side of the superwoman status of, you know, achieving it all, looking great on paper and, and all of that. I'd love for you to expand on kind of how that plays out, that superwoman status and what some of the things that women kind of miss out on in that quest to be that superwoman boss babe, which is actually very masculine. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. There's an aspect of me, and I, I wonder if you agree with this, that loved that. There's something, it was very seductive. It was, uh, it was empowering. empowering. It was validation from my peers. Yeah. I, and, lo and, I love and, validation in my uh, field. I love validation. I, it made me feel powerful. It made me feel strong. I, I got life forced from it until I didn't. Right. And, and that happened, there were like points along the way. And then like you, a, a, sort of a bigger shift that, you know, forced the issue, if you will. And, and I, I wonder if, if, women listening will relate to this. I know my clients have told me that, that it's true for them, that, you know, it feels really good. And then when, but you feel like you, you need to stop, you, you create the spaciousness to stop and you don't know how to be in the space in between. So you just fill it again with more and more and more. And you realize that you're, you're chasing rather than experiencing. Not to mention and, addictions in there too, probably. Totally. Addiction to work, addiction to all sorts of things, right? And I think we have the desire to do more in life because we think it's going to make us feel a particular way. And on the surface, like I mentioned, it does. For a period, a short period of time, it makes you feel enlivened, empowered, and then you have to do it again. And, th and that's the addiction you have to keep doing it to, to give you that feeling. But we're chasing a feeling that can come from being present, which sounds like, oh, really? You're going to just tell me to be present? I have so much to do. That doesn't make any sense. But if you unpack this, the reason we've made these commitments, the reason we've created these goals, the reason we're going after so much and in uh, trying to achieve so much is because we want the feeling that it provides, whether it's money makes you feel a particular way, status makes you feel a particular way, recognition makes you feel a particular way. You, you want the feeling of it. Now, what if we shortcut that? And instead of saying, I have to jump through a thousand hoops, in your case, flying all over the, the world to get that feeling what if we said you could create that feeling right now from a place of wholeness, right? And then make the decision, do I want to, from a desire place, not from a chasing place, do I want to go on this trip? Do I want to do this work? Do I want to have this conversation? And this, this requires, now this is back to the superwoman status piece. This requires a level of trust in the universe, if you will, trust in, in life because superwoman says nothing happens. If, if I don't make it happen, it's all up to me. I, I, I don't trust the other people, life, the other people in my life and life to support me. Therefore I have to hold it all. And you wonder why you're holding the, holding it all and don't feel supported. Okay. This is, the, the answer to it is difficult. You actually have to start trusting life by 
coming from a place of wholeness first rather than chasing. And there's a, there's a transition. I was going to say something that's inaccurate. There's a flip, a, a switch that needs to flip, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's as simple as flipping a switch. I think it's a matter of iterating again and again and again and making simple, small decisions again and again and again to, to feel safe letting down that, that superwoman um, status thing, the letting, getting rid of your cape and saying, okay, life can support me. I can be, um, I can work with life instead of on my own. And, and there's so much more power there. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. I also agree that it's not a, a switch that gets flipped. I know in my experiences, you know, for those of you listening, I had kind of this radiance 1.0 and I did this long fast in the desert and I had to really reevaluate my life because I'd cleared parasites. My brain was working better. I could see things better. I could actually communicate my emotions in a different way because I didn't have parasites in my central nervous system, hijacking, you know, thoughts and emotions, food cravings, all sorts of things. And I used to wear a lot of black. Hmm. And this was actually done as sort of like a protective quality because I was in a lot of pain for many years after the car crashes. And the fast really helped with that. And then fast forward to about a year, year and a half later, which is actually pretty recently, I went through some other stuff, like like life stuff. We all go through life stuff, let's be real. It's not all fields of roses every day. <laughs> There's stuff that happens. But you, it's with the switch, it's not a switch. I would say it's more diligence and per persistence and strategy because I don't believe that everything we desire is going to come to us on a silver platter. We actually have to make space for other things. And so to, to, to be that super woman, but then also get the most out of life, that in and of itself is a little bit of a switch that we do need to flip, say, after the workday to then the evenings when you're having dinner with your family and with your kids, you're with your partner. It's getting back into that feminine mode. So the, the superwoman status thing, I think it's good to be there for a time, like being in the masculine and then jumping back and flipping that switch to then, you know, turn on the feminine. I think a lot of women have this wrong that they're just always in that masculine energy, you know, working the corporate gig, they're getting the validation. I've seen this in my girlfriends who are about 10 years older than me. They have a lot of money and they're just deeply unhappy and they're going through perimenopause and menopause, but everything looks great on paper, but they're in that masculine. And then when I've seen that switch in them, especially with say a partner that they're then with, it's, it's really cool. So I don't think that women are meant to do it all on their own. I think we're great as a team um, with the masculine and feminine dynamic. And I think a lot of women can really get trapped in that and then it impacts their relationship. So let's talk about the solo and successful com a shadow side of, that you love to speak on as well. Tell yeah. us about this solo and successful shadow we need to be aware of. Absolutely. So, so these shadows that Rachel's referring to are all on my, the homepage of my, my website. And so if you want to go deeper into this or, or see a reference to it, they're all there. Um, the solo and successful is, is you're, you're super successful, but you're alone. Okay. You, you don't feel um, like there's, there's true connection in your life. You're missing that true connection, whether it's so, sometimes that's even with yourself, but oftentimes initially it shows up as like, don't have true connection with friends. You don't know if the people in your life like you for who you are or what you can provide for, for them. Right. That, that, and, and you've, you, you have created, cause we, where you have to take personal responsibility here, you've created isolation in your life. And to, you know, in some ways, most of my clients tend to say, you know, but it's working, it's worked up until now, it's gotten me what I want. But when they, when they're 
in, in their quiet times by themselves, they know something is missing and, and they really want a deeper connection. And, and that is a deeper connection to other people, but it's also a deeper connection to themselves and to life. You know, I, when we started this, this conversation off and you asked me, what is radiance? And, and there's this, this deeper connection to, to life force, right? The, the, the essence of life that I, I think we yearn for, I know we yearn for. And when we have that, not only do we have a sense of ecstasy and bliss and, and delight of life, but we don't feel alone. We, we, we feel connected to all that, that is, and, and this sound might sound, um, I don't know, pie in the sky, like, or, or too good to be true, but there is a simple practices that, that, that allow you to really not feel and not be alone. And I think going back to something we were talking about earlier, you were like, it's, it, it takes diligence and persistence. It's not the, the, the switch that flips. And, and that's very much, a a key thing. You, you have to want this and then you have to stay in the practice of it. And it's not a shift. So most women who are very ambitious are used to making quick decisions that um, create quick results and seeing results immediately. And man, having been that woman, I know how addictive that is because we want that instant gratification. And my experience with with helping women get connected to their own source and life force so that they can feel that running through them and not feel alone is that you can have an experience of that uh, fairly quickly and fairly easily and and you need to be persistent and diligent which is being in the feminine right that 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 consistency um it might look different on different days. That's also the feminine, but like to, to keep going with this is what's going to really produce long-term and large results. I'm going to put something out here and it's not meant to challenge you or anything like that. It's, it's just an observation that after world war II, you know, women had to get into the workforce so this whole dynamic since probably the 50s, if you watch Mary Poppins, you'll see this play out. The dad is a banker, the woman was a housewife, then she wants to, um, you know, she has a group of ladies and they're all about women's right to vote. And then they hire Mary Poppins to look after the kiddos, right? So that's kind of where this sort of started. It's really new. So for women to be navigating the professional and corporate world, while still balancing the family life, I think what, what's going on is, is we're seeing kind of this reevaluation of really does the superwoman status play out good long term? I don't think it does because I think it really impacts hormones, it impacts health, it impacts relationships, it I really think impacts being able to form memories with your family because your mind's always thinking about the decision that you need to make next. So my recommendation is to compartmentalize those decisions and really take time to make those decisions so that you're making those decisions in various hormonal states, depending on what your, your hormones are doing uh, within your cycle, you'll, you'll make better decisions that way. But then when those decisions play out, that's when you're, you know, you're going through the life shifts happening to make things better. That's been my experience anyways. And the, the thing about being alone, I think it's a choice to be alone. So some of us choose to have faith and really look into and discover internally what our purpose is. I feel like a lot of people just, they don't really know their purpose. And before we started recording, I basically asked you that. And, uh, and my purpose is to just help people look better and feel better and teach these really great self-care practices for healthier skincare, for, you know, having great nutrition, moving the body and just getting the most out of life, not being on the rat race. So key. And then the, the thing that actually builds community comes back to confidence. 
and confidence occurs when we're really happy with ourselves, when we're making decisions that are calculated, they're the highest decisions. Sometimes we make mistakes. So, you know, having some peace with that sometimes, but acting of integrity and, and making steps in the right direction, every step in the right direction, sometimes there might be an obstacle to overcome and that's okay. That stuff's called life, but it's the, the, the confidence that I think is a key component to building the community. That's actually where beauty comes into all this because it is a, a deep rooted survival need, right? We're all stronger together. So it's such a pleasure for me to connect with someone like you who is also in this space. And I'm really enjoying this, this conversation. So we're going to switch here a little bit and we're going to talk about something just a little bit heavier. And this is trauma chasing and how trauma really hardens women. It does, it makes men stronger and it hardens women. So I'd love for you to talk about the, the concept of trauma chasing. That's my PEMF mat turning off by the way that I'm standing on. <laughs> <laughs> I love that <laughs> in real time, that's great. Yeah, and I love how you, that, that articulation that it, it makes men stronger and hardens women. I think that is so, that's so true. Uh, in terms of trauma chasing, what I see for, for many just, you know, uber successful, ultra successful people, women and women in particular is, is that they do the thing, they, they get the success and they ask themselves, okay, why, why don't I feel better? Right? Like I just did, I just achieved this big thing that I set out for myself, but I don't feel any better. And it's because we're trying to, and, and I alluded to this earlier around the core wounds concept. And if people want to learn more about core wounds, I have a, you know, again, it's on the website, you can go check it out. But um, that if, if we have this wound that we're running from, we're going to chase accomplishments to try and solve that, right? S-A-L-V-E, solve that, right? To, to like put a salve over it, to, to, to make it burn less. And, and it works for a while be, out of sort of deflection and distraction, but it doesn't actually solve the wound. And we end up feeling quite empty, which saps our joy for life. And um, so we're, we're, we're putting a lot of energy after things that are short term highs, but they don't create this sense of wholeness in ourselves. And I think beauty is part of wholeness. I think confidence is part of wholeness. I, I, I think those are, those are also results of wholeness, right? Like it, it's not unidirectional, right? That, that, um, I think if we start instead by asking questions, different questions, instead of it being like, how, instead of it being, how can I avoid feeling this way? And therefore I set these goals because I think that this is going to solve my, my wounds right? And I've done this many, many, many times. And just as a little note, so you don't think that I'm completely out to, to lunch and impractical here, I understand that in doing that, we can have a very outwardly successful life. Okay. But at a certain point, we get to a place where that's not enough. And we start questioning, you know, why don't I feel better? And we start asking, you know, why don't I look better? Why am I bedraggled? Well, you've been making decisions from, you know, you're, you've been asking the wrong question. So let's ask a better question. Like, like if, if the question is, how do we look radiant? How do we feel radiant? Well, then like, what if we, we, recognize that we will look radiant, feel radiant by going towards what we desire, not running away from what's uh, a deep pain. Okay. And, and, and uh, let me actually add to that a little bit. There is, 
I think it's a more positive place to ask yourself, what do I really want? What do I truly want? And, and set a direction in your life from that place rather than setting directions from avoiding pain. Okay. So that's, you know, point one, point two is, do we have to, I, um, identify the pains and things we're running away from and, and, and do some healing work on that. Yes, absolutely. For sure. It, it's not just one sided there. And then once you have those two things clarified for yourself, then I think it really is like, how do I become whole? Right. And, and connected to my own life force and, and that's then what, what makes it so that when you actually set a goal and accomplish it, you feel lasting joy, not just at the achievement of the goal, but the, the, the doing of it all the way. I love it. I also want to give some love to the moms out there who, you know, your role is running the household and being a mom because I know we're kind of focusing on mm. entrepreneurs and successful women here. I think really, and Kathy emailed me the other day. She's been a longtime client of mine. And she said, you know, I, I obviously don't do what you do. I respect what you do. And thank you so much for the information you're putting out. Here's some things that helped me so that maybe you can share on the show to help others. That's my little contribution for today. And I thought that was so lovely. Honestly, even just for me, if, you know, I'm not having a fantastic day because there's problems I needed to solve and it took a lot of energy and it was kind of stressful. And um, what I'll always do is spend a little extra time on my hair, makeup, and my outfit. So that when I go out, people see me and they're like, wow, you look so beautiful. And then that continues to fill me up. Like this whole thing about beauty is a, quite an interesting topic on how it makes us feel fantastic, but also kind of brightens the world of, of others in seeing more beauty. It's like admiring that beautiful rose that you're walking past and smelling. And I did with that with my mother over uh, the weekend recently. I want to just really be a little um, concise here on word choice. And I, I personally stopped using the word want. Like, what do you want? Mm. It's more, what do I desire? That's really going to provide fulfillment and I truly feel that what I desire occurs from actually being able to make space and time and quietness to actually receive it. Mm. And yeah. I used to not do that. I would push and persevere and, you know, work way too much. And I just, I wasn't making any movement or I was, and then, you know, you get that validation, you get that dopamine hit, like this all hormones drive all this stuff, by the way. But then what you said was also really key was avoiding pain. And that actually goes into our attachment style. So some people have an avoidant attachment style, and that actually comes from oftentimes how you were raised. So these things of like avoiding problems, avoiding conflicts is not what you want to do because the shadow of that is that it's going to play out in other things too. So let's dive into the all or nothing situation here. Why, why are so many people just like, okay, balls to the walls. We're going to do this. Pardon my French all or nothing. I mean, I'd, I'd love for your take on this. This, this phrase. Yeah, I think it's how we're raised for sure. Can I, can I go back to the beauty comment that you, you made? Cause I'm like, I'm such a yes on that, Rachel. I'm just such a yes. Uh, uh, about 10 years ago, I, maybe more, I, I went through a real transformation in how I started to treat myself. I, I was raised with efficiency being a high priority. And so spending time on my hair, on my makeup, on, on, um, what I was wearing, it felt frivolous and it felt indulgent and it didn't feel vain, right. Vain. Like that, that's not, those weren't important things. If it wasn't intellectual or, you know, achieving something, right? Like accomplishing something. It, it wasn't 
worthy of my my attention and my time and yet i was looking at myself in the mirror and and in photos and not liking myself like the reflection that i was uh getting was giving me a negative feedback loop and and we can make all sorts of arguments about well that's a cultural you know what, what did you see exactly like physically in that I moment see. what did you see like the color of your skin your eyes how you carried yourself i i saw someone who was frumpy frumpy i didn't feel elegant i didn't i didn't see some i, I could, let, let's say i'll put it in the negative because that's how it was in my head okay i saw like someone who wasn't beautiful, who wasn't elegant, who wasn't put together, who wasn't quaffed, who was frumpy, who was disheveled, right? Who uh, didn't have her, didn't, didn't have a, uh, didn't, wasn't put together, right? And it wasn't, it was a gap between who I knew myself to be and what reflection I was seeing. And I had to go through an, a huge personal transformation around that. And it required this, this to some of the, the things you said after that, it required giving myself space and time so that I didn't try and get dressed in 10 minutes. I gave myself an hour to select my clothes and to, you know, do my makeup and my, do my hair. And it became a um, a way of tapping into how I was feeling that day. And, you know, and I did that this morning. I was like, oh, I've got these three podcasts on the calendar. Okay. What am I feeling today? And oftentimes I'm in, you know, something that's off the shoulder and silky and, you know, there's all sorts of different aspects to my personality. And I picked, I picked what felt beautiful to me today. And it was, a clear resonance and a clear feedback loop. I got, I got that direct knowing that that's how I wanted to, to adorn myself. And all of that to say in doing that, it has been revelatory to me. Like I, I now love what I see. Am I perfect on the self-love front? No. By no means. Okay. Perfection is perfection does not exist. Anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So like I'm not I'm not perfect, perfect here, but like I love looking at myself and liking, loving what I see. And that is a big part of having an exquisite life. I I personally believe that that um and, and we have to come at that from the inside and the outside. Like the outside is, okay, I did learn how to do my hair. I did learn how to do my makeup. I did learn how to care for this body, right? I did learn like what what colors look good on me and, you know, all of that, right? That's outside. And I I love that. It feeds me. But I also had to learn how how to love myself and, and feel tapped into my, my spirit on the inside in order to, to really feel beautiful. And, you know, there are days when I don't put on makeup and as long as I'm connected to source, I have that sparkle in my eye, right? I have that glow and, um, I don't know. I just felt like that was, it's such a part of the ethos of having an exquisite life to be filled with beauty every day, right? To live a life that is beautiful, um, that has this life force. So I just wanted to affirm that. Thank you. I know you mentioned on the hour, we're a little, I've gone a little over for time and I just want to respect your time boundaries. Is it okay if we continue? I, I, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I have nothing booked after this. Great. I'm so thrilled because I personally am really enjoying this conversation and the, the whole vibe of it because it's very positive and constructive. And that's what we want to focus on when we're learning more about ourselves and we're doing things that are good for us. So I think this is a really good constructive conversation to uh, continue to dive in a little bit more. The um, 
What you mentioned about the all or nothing phrase, you, you just said so many beautiful things that I totally resonate with. The all or nothing phrase, I think is a really interesting concept or framework rather, if you will, if we're talking about communication and negotiation. And by the way, everybody, like that's this kind of conversation. Um, I love going deep on these components, tying it back to beauty and radiance and the membership. And then how to use your products, like you said, I like using my products. Um, that's the tutorials. I teach you how to do that stuff, the, the physical stuff. But in the process of all or nothing, we miss out on the beautiful memories. And that's where the best stories come from, is yeah. when you are moving towards something and it's the experiences in between. It's like we never arrive. We're kind mm -hmm. of always on this journey. I mean, we're all... Let's be honest here. We're all just figuring life out. <laughs> I, I really think we do this all or nothing thing. It's so ubiquitous. So mm -hmm. like we, we do it like I'm going to throw everything into whether you're a mom or you're running a business or like I, I've set what my, my priority. I'm going to throw everything into that. And then other things in your life get, get thrown out. But it can be like all or nothing in your, your energy. Like I can be, be, um, all on or in relax mode. What if, what if it could be both, right? Like what, what if you didn't have to be so, so, um, compartmentalized in your, your life. And, and, you know, sometimes that's really helpful because, without doing that, we go off track. So there's a place for it. But then even there, I feel like we're making these all or nothing decisions. And it's antithetical, antith I can't pronounce that word, antithetical, an antithetical, there we go, antithetical to wholeness, right? When you're, 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 you're cutting off a part of you. So like, for me, I was either an intellect or a beauty. I couldn't be both, right? That's an all or nothing, right? I could, I could be, um, I could have great sex or I could run a business. Well, what if you could do both, right? You know, what, why there's so many places where this shows up, right? I can, I can either be a great mom or I can look really good, eh, right? That's not true. So I, I would just encourage people to see where they're, they're, they're making these kinds of choices in their lives and for them to question whether that's accurate or true, because the universe is based on wholeness. It's not based on separation. We have learned separation. We have learned that we can't have it all. We have learned that it's either this or that. But that's, that's a construct. That's a human construct. And the truth is that it, it, if, if we desire to have it, have wholeness, we can live in wholeness and we don't have to make it this, this AB split test kind of life. Oh, I love this. I'm so glad that you kind of brought up this concept of extremism. And let's be honest, if we've learned anything over the last couple of years, extremism is actually what divides us. And at the end of the day, if we're looking to build our confidence and community, we have to be able to navigate and negotiate in any type of situation with lots of different type of people too, informing our communities, forming relationships, both personally and professionally. I don't think that extremism in, in health and biohacking is healthy either. And, you know, for listeners here, you know that I love to talk about biohacking and oxidative stress. The other thing is that I think that women who are always chasing something and men too, I think that there's a beauty in that space between in that journey, just celebrate those, those milestones, those achievements along the way and celebrating those wins because then you're going to have time with your quality time, love languages, with your friends, with your family members. I think those are great too. And the other thing about being whole, one thing that has really built confidence in me is actually um, I was called, um, and I have a number of times, like an Annie Oakley or a Renaissance woman having all these different facets to me that I can kind of turn on and shine in certain situations. 
I love that kind of can be a chameleon in any situation. It's also etiquette component here too, so that you can um, connect with various different circles, depending on where you are and who you're engaging with as well. The other thing is what I've observed about women who, because you were talking about disheveled, is when women over the years have come to see me for rejuvenation and they're the busy moms. Their kids are in the private school. They're keeping up with the Joneses. They're hosting dinner parties at their house all the time. They're, they got double mortgages or whatever. They're keeping up with the Joneses. They have this busy badge of honor and it's almost like women and actually healthcare practitioners in general, it's like the wounded healer kind of situation. To look the part of doing a good job, some people think that I, I think that they, they feel like they won't be looked at as doing enough if they look put together. Oh, that's fascinating. Like if I've, if I look put together, I'm going, people are going to think that I'm, I have plenty of time to, yeah, that's fascinating. Well, why is that important to you? You know, I would really question that. Why are you, what, what is important to you? If you want to look and feel your best because it makes you feel good, right? To me, I had to overcome my upbringing, which is similar to this. Let's, you know, I, 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 if, if I spent time on beauty, that was frivolous, right? That was, um, not what intellects did, not what, but this is, that's not what busy people do. And I had to really overcome that and choose what was important to me, what was my, and, and said a different way, what my truth was. So if your truth is you want to look and feel your best, then choose that instead of being driven by a fear of what other people think of you. And I think in, in a lot of ways, you can look and feel your best in a small amount of time or in a large amount of time. I'm sure you have many techniques for that. But, but again, I think that uh, you know, what I've learned is, you know, in the beginning, maybe it took me a long time to do this because I was new at it. Now I can get dressed pretty, pretty simply. And I know how to, to, to what works for me and it feels really good and all of that. And I have personal practices that I teach my clients, but that are not rocket science either that, that allow me to glow all the time without, without a lot of effort. So, um, I think the busy badge is a bunch of hooey. I'm just going to say that like it, it pains me. Uh, I was addicted to it for many, many years and it's, it's it like was when you age. ask someone, Oh, how are you today? Oh, I'm so busy. Is that yeah. supposed to be like a, a good response? Yeah. But it's, it's how we've learned to be accepted, right? It's, it's, it's how I've learned, like our culture says that, like, I wouldn't blame, blame yourself, but I would question it. Um, I'd rather say like, I'm feeling amazing, right? Like I'm good today. I'm really good. And, and I think that, you know, many of us might it might be a radical shift out and, and, and might be, you know, we're all trained to, to, to need to say part of the, the community to belong, to feel safe. You know, if we were thrown out of the, the castle walls, we would have been eaten by, by wolves. So there's something very primal about fitting in. And so if, if fitting in means you have to say you're busy, it makes, it makes it hard to, to take a different choice. And yet you're not going to be thrown to the wolves. You're not going to die. In fact, if you keep this up for a while, people are going to start asking you, so what have you been doing? Right? Because I mean, I don't know about you, Rachel, but I think it's primal that we want to feel good. Like it's, it's part of our nature to be, want to 
be one with the divine, right? And have this life well, for force thousands in. of years. I mean, the Egyptians thousands right. of years ago, beautification was happening. Like this is not a new phenomena to adorn ourselves with jewelry or garments or makeup. The thing about the, the skincare and the makeup situation, I'll get ready. I'll get film recording ready like this or with my hair done. Cause I'll do overnight curls in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. So it's, it's not about having your whole AM routine, this hour long, get ready process. Like forget it. I don't have time for that. I don't want to do that. Uh, it's just using great products, great makeup, doing certain things with your hair so that it curls itself overnight. So you don't have to heat style it. Um, that's what's really fun in the tutorials actually, but it doesn't have to take a long time. The thing about the busy badge of honor and how we respond often comes from our social circles, our family, what we've learned. And I actually learned about beauty from my mom. Mm. My mom was a night nurse and she worked very diligently to um, take really good care and give my sister and I an upbringing. So did my father. And my mom always put her makeup on. And what this does, I think it sends a positive signal to those who you're, you're have friendships with or business connections with that you actually have your life together. I think that those who come across as very, being very jittery or overly exuberant with gestures and um, disheveled, it gives indication that their life is a mess and their home is probably disaster or their car. And actually having everything, having a place will actually end up saving you time. You'll spend less time tidying up throughout the week if you know you just kind of put things back and think about psychologically what someone's mind must be like as well just very scattered and frazzled. And I take these, these things into account when I'm forming personal or, or uh, professional relationships with people. I definitely look at these, at these cues. I'd love to get into the sensual flat line mm. situation because when women are like, you got to work like a man, you know, we're equal, yada, yada, yada. The sensual flatline situation, I think it really happens from uh, hormones because women are way too much in the adrenaline and high cortisol state. They're not experiencing the dopamine and oxytocin that comes from bonding. They don't feel safe. Their mind is running at a million miles a minute. Mom brain, when the mom brain hits a pillow at night, it's like, what happened today? What happened a month ago? What's happening tomorrow? And, you know, the man's out out for the count. And so we're very different species. I would love to hear your take on this essential flat line situation. Yeah. So we as women have a lot of power. It's amen huge. to that. Once you tap right. into that beauty and radiance, ooh, it is yeah. power. Yeah. And it is such an incredible life force that we get to share with the world, right? We get to be, we get to be a benefactor, uh, you know, a, a giver of this. But if we're all tapped out, we have nothing to give. And, and then it makes it very hard to receive as well. So it, 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 it's a vicious literally circle. receive yeah. physically in the act. Correct. So, so, um, here's how I see it. We have life force. We need to be tapped into this life force. It's not just about being in your feminine though. That's important. It is this, this, the, the masculine essence and the feminine essence coming together inside of us that creates this life force. So it's this harmony between our masculine side and our feminine side, the, the, the structure and the flow. And if we can tap into that, and generally for women, that is about moving more towards the flow, more towards the allowing, more towards the receiving, because we've been overcompensating and we've learned to, to, be more in our masculine. So if we can tap into that, what happens is we, we tap into the power of the universe. So, so just like making babies requires the, the 
masculine sperm and the feminine egg to, to create life, having both essences of the masculine and the feminine come together inside of you creates this life force. When you have this life force running through you, you're tapped into life, right? And you feel in life and you feel sexy, you feel beautiful, you feel flirty, you feel connected, everything tingles in your body and you sparkle, okay? Like, and the mind is quiet. Yeah. You're in your body. Yeah. And you are in love with life. You're, you're glowing from the inside out from the outside. And, and then because of that, you can do all the outer things and it feels very integrated and natural. And what happens is you sparkle. And then literally, this is now I'm talking men, women. Now, when a woman sparkles, it lights up a man's life. They pay attention they give you the the adoration the the presencing the the protection the support because they they don't sparkle that way that's not that's not their uh quality in life and they turn to women for that nourishment that sparkle and so if you're lit up you're going to attract that and then that is a positive uh circle upwards you know flow upward spiral upward where then you're getting all the the love and the nurturing and the 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 sexual yumminess that you need to sort of really feel even that much more beautiful and you're getting that that nourishment and even if you're not partnered you can get that nourishment i remember when i wasn't partnered and i would just walk through life and men would give me attention not in a threatening way, that's not the kind of attention, but in a um, honoring, like they just wanted to be in my presence and I could see it light up their, their lives. And that was fulfilling to me. It like came back again. And I think for so many women, things have become a sensual flatline, whether you're in business, whether you're, you're, you know, your full-time job is being a mom, whether you're, you're working in a corporation, whatever it is, you know, we, we have prioritized a kind of task oriented efficiency that, um, doesn't have you tapped into this, this life force. And I know a lot of women, uh, are craving that and are missing that. And, and I just want to hold up like a tantalizing little, uh, carrot that says it's totally possible. And, and in fact, it becomes easier. Let's, let's wrap this concept up here with saying that it becomes easier to get all the things done in your life. If you're tapped into this energy, this life force, because you're no longer, uh, doing it on your own, resentful because of that you, you're supported by life, by men, by other people, because you're giving this sparkle out to this, to the world and receiving back. I could go on and on and on about this. But this is such a big one. It is. And I'm, it's just how you described it was so beautiful. Again, I think you're a fantastic, eloquent speaker on some of these topics. And so there's this concept of turning on the feminine radiance. Now, when you turn this on, Yes, you are going to attract a lot of attention because you literally become a beacon of this very specific, beautiful energy. And I used to actually be really scared of showing that mm, yeah, because it just, it just, it just, it just wasn't honed quite right yet. So I wasn't necessarily attracting the right energy, mm, but yeah. then when I honed it for myself, I worked on myself and really this deep beauty, this deep, beautiful feminine radiance. It is like magic. It is literally like magic. And you know what the, the masculine really loves to do with this? Protect it. <laughs> protect yep. it. That is incredible. So, I mean, you can see the power in that, right? Yeah. 
for having better relationships, better business connections, making more friends, your confidence is is really turning this on sometimes and like dialing it up. And Marilyn Monroe, I think is a great example of this, but she's an example of, I think, trauma chasing. It's well known that she went through a lot of difficult challenges, had some issues with, you know, her own plastic surgery as well, which negatively impacted her. So I don't recommend ever doing anything new, by the way, in the rejuvenation space. You want things to be, um, trialed for a long enough time. So we know the long-term outcomes and Marilyn Monroe is, I think, a perfect example of this, but we forget about this power. And then once you mm. learn to wield it, you better be ready for what's And you better it. wield it for good, right? Oh, 100%. 100% yeah. Of integrity, of service. Absolutely. Because I think a lot of, a lot of people, not just women, but I am speaking about to women right now is like we've we've felt threatened and we felt we have felt without power for so long that when you tap into this it's almost uh you realize you can manipulate people with it and because it is so powerful and that just cannot be your come from because it will bite you okay it won't last and why would you why would you want to sabotage yourself like that not to mention other people. So when, when, when you learn to tap into this and there's an art to it, there's a, there's a shedding of a lot of stories, a lot of, um, programs, programs, identity, pieces of your identity that have to be released so that you can be uh, pure in this. When you're able to do that, you get to, you get to use this power and, and, revel in it it, as a gift, right? It's a gift to others, not a, not a manipulation. So, um, yeah, Yeah, I'm so glad you used the purity word because that's actually one of the premises of what I think radiance is. It comes from purification of our body, mind, spirit, and energy. Radiance is the 10th body in Ayurveda, and it's a reflection of all of your other systems and how they're operating. And always acting out of integrity, you know, the highest outcome. One of the things that I like to say is everything's always working out even better than I imagined. And even Mm. when times are tough, even when we kind of have to overcome these obstacles, life is life. We've made decisions. And then the reality of all those things are playing out. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Enjoy the process along the way. This has truly been uh, a very enjoyable conversation for me to have with you. And I'm just very grateful for what you're doing. And Amira, you know, keep going because more women, I think, need this message. And then also for the guys listening, which is 25% of you, to learn about these different qualities. Because I would say on social media, we're seeing a lot of like the, the very masculine protector provider. We're not really hearing enough of the, um, the feminine energy stuff. And it's just so beautiful. And it's such a key component to slowing aging with keeping your hormones in check, your stress levels lowered mm. and just being a good person leading by example, when others around you see you, you're looking in the mirror and yourself, you're like, that happened. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a reflection to you as well. Like, what are you doing? And uh, so I'm thrilled. I've been so excited for this conversation, Amira. Um, Do you have any final words? And of course, uh, where can people find you? Yeah, absolutely. So well, I love this conversation as well, Rachel. This has been really beautiful and and insightful for me. I, I I'm always grateful to speak to someone and have this kind of level of communication. And and so thank you for setting the frame and asking such good questions uh, and for your insights. In terms of last thoughts, you know, I really. I, I really specialize in, in working with women who have businesses and want to redesign their business from a place of wholeness in order to have a fuller, more exquisite life. And we use different words. You use the word radiance, which I love. 
I use the word exquisite, like how do we live exquisitely? How do we live an exquisite life? And I, I know that, that there are challenges around this that block us from, from doing so. And yet the truth is that we're made to live this way and we can come back to wholeness and we can, we can be successful financially. We can be impactful. We can have great businesses, empires, and live exquisitely, which does mean much of what we've been talking about is like this integration of our masculine and feminine and, and coming from a place of wholeness and connection to source and spirit, which when I was 10 years ago, I was, would be like, what are you talking about? But now I truly understand that this is, this is the force that makes everything so much easier and, and lights us up. So if people are interested in, in learning more about that, the best place to find out more information is my website, which is the unstoppable woman.com. And I have information on the seven shadows of success on there, which we touched on today. Um, the core wounds concept. We have a private podcast that people can listen to that explains more in depth how to, what to look for there and how to move through that. I have my own podcast that you're going to be on shortly, which is going to be great called the unstoppable woman. So you can check me out there and then on all social media platforms as, as well. So, um, just, I, I love connecting with people. So please do reach out and ask me any questions that may have popped up from, from this conversation. I'm happy to answer them personally. So, yeah. Fabulous. And all of Amira's uh, links are in the description of this episode as well. So you can easily find ways to connect with her there. And I'm really grateful for this conversation, having kind of really been in that superwoman, the, the core wounds, everything you mentioned I've experienced. And I'm in my late thirties now. And I'm just actually really grateful that I've learned these things at this stage. Yeah. Because I recognize it's a little young to be learning these things, but I've always learned from women who are much more wise than I am. We're talking 60s to mid 90s. This, this stuff takes a while to kind of piece together and then the strategy on how to actually roll it out and get the results from it. So for those of you listening, as you know, I'm cutting back on the one-on-one -on -one sessions um, because I just need to like really hone my time in different ways to protect my own energy. So if you haven't yet booked your one-on-one, -on -one, do that. I warmly invite you to for customized skin and rejuvenation guidance to learn how to use your products. Be sure to join my secure spot for my seasonal tutorials that are happening now. And we'll just strategize and streamline your essential routines and advanced routines. And then for really cultivating radiance, I'd say give yourself a year truly to step into your most radiant version. And when you join the membership, you'll actually even see videos of me from a year ago when I first launched the membership and just how different I look. I literally look different. My face looks different. The way I carry myself looks different. I speak differently. My gestures are completely different because of this huge radiance uh, 2.0 shift that um, I've had recently. So obviously I had to redo the whole thing, but when you uh, register, you'll see my own transformation from a year ago, I'm a little embarrassed by them, but it's kind of part of the process. You know, we all go through our own journeys. Perfection doesn't exist. You've heard me say that before, but the strategy and persistence does, but doing so in a deeply grounded, centered, aligned way, being of service, acting of integrity, taking your time to make decisions so that uh, you make less mistakes along the way too. Um, I, I really look forward to having you back, Amira, on the show and diving in uh, to some of the other questions that your team brought forward um, and continuing this conversation. So thank you for your time. I know we went a little bit over, but I personally really enjoyed this. So if I enjoyed it, I'm sure a number of you listening also have as well. Thank you everyone for taking the time to learn about these very constructive components to help you both look and feel your best on the School of Radiance podcast. Stay high vibe, stay beautiful, stay resilient, and become 
even more radiant every single day. I'll see you all again very soon right here on the School of Radiance podcast.